Mezikoda back again with the second part of my Unity tutorial, getting to grips with the animator and the UI editor. I am a learning as I'm going. We are making this Marvel vs. Capcom with our special friends... Hagar! The Fighting Mayor! That's me! Mike Hagar, and also, we want to have a word with... Captain Marvel! Hope you're up for this! Yes, Captain Marvel, I am up for this. Are you up for it? Well, I hope so. And before I jump into Unity and show you how I made this button, I want to show you this awesome ebook about how you can optimize your game development. It's from Unity, it's free. You've got to click on the link down below, fill in your details in the online form, and you can get your hands on this awesome ebook. Basically, it will help you optimize your game dev so that you don't have a game that sucks. As most of you know, I am terrible at optimization. I really am. And this ebook is going to turn my life around and hopefully it will do the same for you. Fill in your details, get yourself this ebook, and see how you can make a game. By the way, filling in that form helps me a lot too because it doesn't cost you a penny, but it puts some of that affiliate juice my way, those folks over at Unity. So click that link, have some fun, and I'll see you all in a second. I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as I can. Let me just make sure my microphone's okay. Hey, it seems to be fine. We had some complaints. Just that the microphone was too quiet last time. So hopefully, we're all right now. We've got the kids screaming downstairs. I'm going to make this button a different size. We're going to go 86 by 116. I'm going to get rid of this UI sprite. And we don't need this text that sits inside it. I'm also going to create another... UI image that sits inside that one. I'm just going to hide you for a moment because I would like to change the color of this just to make it a bit easier to see what we're up to. You know what? I'm going to do a red one. We're going to go this kind of red color. What do you, what do you think? Does that look good? I think that looks good. That looks like a good red color. Lovely. And we've got, I'm just going to put you back in the middle just to avoid any confusion. It doesn't really matter afterwards if you want to put it somewhere and then just as long as you have the children relative to its daddy. So this one here is zero zeroed and it's nice and centered. So you are going to be 80 by 110. Slightly smaller. Now we've got a border that lives in there and I'm going to call you background and when I come up here and make you visible again so you can see this white it's here and if I go into my UI folder you'll notice that I've got these little gradients that I've made, and all they are, I'll show you, go to the sprite editor, they're just little squares, different coloured grey coloured squares, and when you drop them into something, they'll get all stretched out. There you go, and that kind of creates a gradient. And now if I change the colour to be this red, you see, we get a nice little gradient appearing. Lovely. That looks nice, very pretty. I'm going to right click back onto the button and create another UI uh, image. If I clicked on the background and did it, there will be a child in the background, and we don't really want that. Actually, um, for this purpose, it doesn't really matter because it's the thumbnail of the lady. Well, in this case, we're going to be doing Daddy Marvel the thumbnail. But we could, if I right click in here, I'll show you. If I make here, we would say icon image, and I'm going to just drag in my Marvel icon. Let's put Captain Marvel in there. Drag her in. And if I click set native size, she fits to 80 by 110. I'm just going to cut this image out. And you see that there she is, and she's got a border. Not exactly the same as the original, but pretty damn close. Not too bad if we change the background to be slightly darker. There we go. That's quite nice. Quite nice indeed. So you can do it this way if you want it, or you can have it sitting outside. Now, this one, I'm going to make it invisible again. And I'm going to make it slightly bigger. 88 by 118. So you can see, just a touch bigger, because you can see this little outline that's around it. And I'm going to make you, because it's still player one, I'm going to make you, by default, that blue. Where's that player one blue? That's the active play one blue. I'm going to guess about, let's say, this colour. That's a nice colour. And this is going to be called active. And actually, 
doesn't really matter with that one because I'm going to do a little bit of a slip. I'm going to create another one inside it. I'm going to call this one border. Uh, border default. I'm going to create... Uh, I was going to create another one, but you know what? We might just duplicate this. If I go back to the UI and I drag in my border. I think this is the correct one. And I put you to be 88 by 118. And that's nice and big. And if I just take advantage of the little mistake I made and grab the color and I'm just going to go back to the active and remove that component because it really should have been there and now I've got a border that's slightly bigger than the original I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to, going to change the color of the other one and this one's going to be called border active that's nice and now when we have animation this is what's going to change it's going to fade out this one or fade fade in this blue one on top of this one and then give it another blue one and that's our animation if we do it with a color change during animation I haven't found a decent way how to make the color transition nicely from one to another uh, in an animation so uh, I have found a nice way of transitioning one object to another if you can find if you know a better way of doing it please do let me know this is all about us learning together because I really don't have a clue what I'm doing I'm learning as I go I am no way an expert or even an advanced and even an intermediate user on the Unity UI and animations. I am a beginner and I'm showing you what I'm learning as I'm doing it. So if I can do it, you can do it. Trust me, I'm a noob. If I can do it, you definitely can. I'm going to call this one Player 1. And inside Player 1, again, it's like in an image which doesn't really need to be there. But you know what, for the sake of it, I'm just going to leave this image here so you can see visually what we're going to do. I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm holding down Shift and it's going to move and pit and move the um, anchor to this here, the bottom, top left. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that later when we scale our text, it's using this as the pivot point. Now I'll put it at 60 by 60. I've kept this image in here just so you can visually see. This is where this player one is going to sit. Now inside you, I'm going to create another UI object, uh, another image. And if I did this button here, so if I did Alt and push this button, you'll see that it takes form of a parent. And this is quite nice. I'm going to drag in the player image. Now I'm going to go back over here and remove this image from the player one, because we don't need it anymore. You can see what I'm up to. And here it is. There's our little triangle. I'm going to hide this active, just to make it easier for me, so I can grab the color of this bar here. And that looks very nice. By the way, later on you're not going to have to worry about picking these colors because we'll generate that from the scripts. But while you're building it, it's nice to have an idea because you'll be playing about with the animation you want to test it. So I'm going to say P1 active. Oh, uh, no, P1 default. This is not P1 active. P1 default. And let's right click, duplicate you, and say P1 active. And then I'm going to put back the border active just so we can see a nice blue color. And I'm going to just pick him up. Now you can get it from, save it in your swatches, or grab it actually from the last image, but we're just doing it this way. Now I'm gonna right click in here, go to UI text, text mesh pro text. I'm gonna change this one quick, P1 text. This is where it's gonna be very unique to what you're doing. Pretty much all of it's always gonna be unique to what you're doing. I'm gonna choose a different font, this Oswald bold one. I can make some character spacing there, five. I'm gonna change the text to say 1P. And I'm going to change this height to be 28. That's not too bad. Up in the top, up in the left, and over here. You can do like we did in the other one. We don't alt and just click this and force it to be there. Gives you less flexibility. I think this looks okay. If we put this in the middle, how does that look? Not liking it. So let's use um, the margin. Click on extra settings here. Margin left. I'm going to stick a 5, and I'm happy with that. That looks good. Maybe reduce the height a little bit. If I go to the margin and I say a minus 2, or even a minus 3. That looks good. I'm happy with that. You see over here, we've got our outline colour. We've got that set to that blue. And the face colour, we set it to white. Wow. Looking lovely. Dilates 0.1. Why is it 0.1? Should we say it's a zero? Is that 
and thickness is zero as well. I'm just going to save this in case anything explodes. And now we have our player one. And if I duplicate this, change the name to be player two, and go down here and I change player one default to be player two, player two. The reason why we make sure we do these now is that when we're animating, we don't change things. If you're animating and then you change the name of an object, the animator can't find it anymore. It gets a little bit upset. I've had that problem a number of times. All I'm going to do over here is click on my or on my shift and change my anchor to be over here. I'm going to select these two little badges and I'm going to do, I could do two things. I could say minus one, minus one, and it puts it over here. Or if I put this back to one, I can change this to say 180. Same, pretty much the same thing, isn't it? And the text, again, I want to anchor that in the corner there. And I'm going to go down here and say, you know what, down the bottom, over on the right, don't need to be five anymore. You can be minus five. Oh, actually five here. Do you know what, to be honest, you could even just keep that there. It doesn't make a difference. It's the top that you worry about, but that's who, I don't know, do you want? Even that you don't need to worry about. I could have done this. There you go. Minus three, even minus five. That's looking good. And top minus five. So if I went back to this one, I could have five, minus five, five, minus five. Lovely. That actually works quite well. And then I'm going to change this to say 2p, oh, 2p. And if I right clicked and duplicate again, it's made our life quite easy with the margins. I'm going to change you to be player three. And I'm going to stick you um, on a 90. No, 270. That's better. You, my friends, shift and alt and over there you go. Likewise with the text. Change the point to be over there. And say, oh, I stand the way, but go up the top. And looks like our right seems a bit wrong. Change you to say three. That looks good. Mm, let's give you, let's give you two. It's actually, it'd be nice if you had two as well. Although you're never going to see them all at the same time. So don't worry about them all being lined up. Perfect. You know what, you should just worry about what feels good for you. And I'm going to change these names like we said a second ago. Make sure that you do that. Now, my game, I could have three players and I could even have four. Marvel Crisis Capcom's only got two. I just want to show you that this little trick works really well. And if I move back over here, and now I say you can be 80, oh, 90 even. Um, oh no, you're not going to be 90, are you? In the bottom corner. And also, make sure that you're actually moving these little things. Put you to be zero. All oh, that we could do that to be minus one. Let's do that way. Let's go crazy. Let's just go crazy for a moment. Mix it up. Mix it up. Mixing it up can be fun. And left. You want to be two. Change this to be four p. And now we have our button. Simple as that. Simple as that. We've got our button done. It's looking good. Don't look terrible. I have to say, looks okay. Let's. Make sure that our pivots are all in the right place. In the bottom left hand corner. This one's top right hand corner. This one's bottom right. And this one's in the... Who are you? Oh. Top left. Good thing we double checked. It is, isn't it? A good thing we double checked. Looking good. Okie dokie. If you remember in the last video we played about the script test butts. Test button. Not test bus, test button. I'm going to say using TM Pro. We are going to be using it, and this script could easily be linked in with something more advanced, such as Messi's ultimate character selector, which hopefully one day you'll be able to get on the Unity Asset Store. And if you were over on Twitch and a sub, you'd get a copy of it as well at a discounted price. So Text Mesh Pro UGUI is what we want to create a private array of, and we're going to call it uh, M. TMP. Here we go. So we're going to make an array of tech items that have text mesh pro components. So if we go over to our avoid a week and again let's be naughty 
and do something that you shouldn't do anywhere outside of an awake really we're gonna get a load of components so get game object get components in children with an s there it is components in children and we're looking for in particularly text mesh pro UGUI components I'm gonna say true in here that way it doesn't matter if it's enabled or disabled we'll be able to find it which is important for us because by default we'll be disabling things uh, such as player 2, player 3, player 4 and enabling them when they become active so you want to make sure that you do get them all so if I come down to here we've got our awake where we're grabbing them and I'm going to create a new little method called public because it's going to be a public one we want to be able to get outlines remember that blue that we spoke about avoid outline text and I'm going to pass through integer value that we're going to use and I grab over here and much like we played before about the balls if we can't really pass through a ball so we're going to pass through a fake ball int for each again for each not fantastic for optimization because at the end of the day it's just doing a for loop so you could write a for loop but if you're not if you're not lazy to be honest but for the sake of this tutorial I'll make a lazy text mesh pro for each of these that we have in our array I'm going to call in player and where's our array? Our array is here. M temper. Put my curlies on another line. And I'm just going to double check to make sure that he's active in the hierarchy. So first we say if he's not player game object active in the hierarchy, then let's just skip to the next one. Continue. Because it's in a for loop, so we're just going to skip. If he's not active, no point playing with him. Go over to the next one. I'm going to say if we're going to check that the value is actually zero because we've got a little pretend ball going there. Then we're going to say else do something else. So all we care about is zero is a no, and anything else can be a yes. You can just put nine 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 nine, knock yourself out. Player font material set a float for the shader utilities that we're going to be grabbing, and we're looking for this ID. Uh, oh, not bevel. Out line width. It's a shame that I made a mistake, otherwise, it would have automatically populated it. And we'll find that as a zero because we are setting things to the default state. So we want our outline to be zero by default, otherwise, that'd be weird. Then we've got player.font material, not shared, so that we don't have to worry about affecting everyone. Just this instance of the material for this object. Let's do shader utilities full stop and this one we want id face dilate do you remember we set that one to 0 0.1 well i'm gonna set it to zero f here like we did but we fixed it, it should be 0 0.1 should be zero and i'm gonna say color 32 let's make a new color call it color let's be crazy and grab the player font material you guessed it get color what color well shader oh, wrong way little bracket shader utilities the id face color is what we want boom and then what we're going to do with that is set the color of our face so font material dot set color or well not set float set color shader utilities full stop id face color now what value it's going to be a new color we have to put new in there and well color 32 you're asking me why are we passing through a color uh, to set a color well I want to keep the R so I'm going to pass through the R that we got from over here the original R of the actual object that we're setting again so itself its own G value and its own existing B value the only thing we're going to change is the alpha so we're going to make it fully visible just in case the last time we saw him he was invisible now this is our set things to the full set the text material effect to default settings there we go now we're gonna set the text material effect to the active settings that's what we're gonna do so all of those things we did there we can now just grab them boom and what we could do is put this here but I like I like that we're getting it every time uh, player dot blah 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 we're gonna set 
uh, the thickness to be 0.5. We're going to set the dilate to be 0.3. And we're going to set the alpha to 0. And that way, our text suddenly has got no inside because its alpha is set to 0. And the outside thickness has been set to 5. So you can see the writing because we've put a border to it. I'm going to save that. Bing bong. Let's put all these things back here. Boom. Put them back on. So what we're doing is setting the children so that you can actually be the set, be the right values that want to be when the animation starts. And we're going to hide this entire um, active component because until you're selected, you won't even see it anyway. So first things first is to go over to these actives because they should be hidden. I'm going to click this record and I'm going to click on the color here and change that to be zero. That was, oh, and not that. Oh, oh, naughty me. Change that to be zero. Thank you so much. And stop the recording. Now, if we expand this, we should hopefully see that, yes, only the alpha channel was changed. And if we pop over here to active. Oh, actually, you know what we should do? We should hide this one as well. Put you, Mr. Border. What did we do, Border? Now we do zero. There we go. Brilliant. And while this is clicked, let's go to active and turn you off. Boom. Wonderful. So if I put these little badges back on, which one is it compared to? I picked up the wrong one. Here we go. If we put these back to 255, by default, active, 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 active. If we click play here, brilliant, they've disappeared. Beautiful, perfect, exactly what we wanted. Looks lovely. Now we want to see what happens when it's selected. Let's change that in case everything crashes. First thing we want to think about doing is going from the dark blue to this light blue. And if we put the first frame, let's make sure that the light blues are set to zero. Zero. Let's make sure that the active is set to true. So I'll just turn it off and turn it back on again. Can I then stop the recording? Ooh. And put it in recording again. Click the defaults. Make sure the defaults start off at 255. Now, if we check again. Yes, only the alphas are affected. Brilliant. Now if we pop over here to 10. Hmm. Five seconds? Five seconds. And I'm going to make sure I've got the defaults still selected. And I'm going to just again stick a 255 in there. Brilliant. And now on a 10. I'm going to go to my actives, making sure the record is still on, and I'm going to say actives, you please, can you be 255, and on 15, I'm going to, you know what, let's just copy these, and paste them over here, brilliant, now if I click play, Boom, boom, boom. It's flashing a little bit too much. I'm going to click this top one here, which means I can move all of its children. So I'm going to put you to 25. I'm going to put you to, where do you reckon? 10. Now we're going to push play. And the reason why I've got these here on 5 and on 20 is so that the transition doesn't start too early, but we've kicked in to say at least show them. We've got our animation set up, and now we're going to Go over to which one have we got clicked? Actually, you know what? I want disable to be the same as normal, so I'm gonna go to the normal, select all, copy it, paste it over here into disabled. So we've got select. Now, when you click it, we want it to have that funky animation. So if we say by default, make sure that click that our. 255 
on the active and about here 0 0.01 that should go to zero brilliant and just to be safe the default at the start also set that to zero brilliant on the 15 on the, see on the 16 we've got here set anim trigger is set so set anim trigger the script that we had in the last one and they've got it set to disabled so that when you get to this frame it goes to the disabled state so just before it just before it i'm going to click on the texts make sure recording is on i'm going to change my not my size my scale so the scale up here not the scale down there to be three and hopefully let's everything seems to have been yep look it keeps the same on the same place so bang three player one do you think that's too big could be could be a touch too big let's go player two it's down here and player three oh one thing player three text up here play a four text you guessed it it's down the bottom here we go play a four text lovely and here making sure it's still selected we want to make this transparent at this point because it's fading out fading out back to the zero if you push play there you go it's looking good bang 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 in your face in your face in your face look at me look at me we want to buy our outline i can't really work out how to put the outline at, uh, using the animator so what we're going to do is well we're going to put an event that's going to call our method that's right you figured it out if i go to say at this point 0.1 let's add another event boom click on events gonna move my mouse at the top put it up on the keyboard and now i can go straight down to here it's outline text what do we say it's going to be one brilliant and by default over here i'm going to on the zero zero set an event um same event we're going to do for that to be one i mean to put that to be zero because we're setting it to default and at one second putting it to one because it's set to true if we go over here and we set um go to disabled select or copy that paste <laughs> it into the highlighted and if we go over boom Kablao! fantastic that is great there's one last thing that we want to be doing but we're going to be doing that in the code is that when we do select uh a mouse over the background here is going to change to the color of the player tell you what we'll do that in the next video we'll start using messi's on character selector and we'll start showing you how we can make this script that we've added here this test button script where are you where is he here it's test button script to use that with Messi's ultimate character selector so we can make our button perform as we want to in our game with the white colors, colors for the player, and put that over here. Oh, I can hear a little squeaker coming up the stairs. Now, add in a Hagar button that I made. This is Hagar. I know. You know? What, what does it say here? Hagar. Hagar. Well done. And. Look at that, I made this little thing with the buttons, okay? Who's who's this lady? Do you know her? Aquaman? No. Aquaman? Close, it's Captain Marvel. Oh. Yeah. What happens if I click it? Oh, it worked! It went pop! What about Hagar? Wait, which one of these buttons is for Hagar? Is this it? No. This one? No. Uh, this one? No. This one? Yes. What happens if I click it? Do you think it'll work? Yeah. Wait, what? Give me a high five. I'm a magic genie. <laughs> You're a magic genie? Yes, I made it work. Thank I you. Just, I just kicked my fingers. Yeah. Thank you, darling. I really appreciate your magic genie-ness. you going to say um, goodbye on the video? Goodbye. Well, that was good. If you do like it, click it. Till next time. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. 
and down below there's that big juicy subscribe button and right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.